Alex. How are you? How are you, Alex McCarter? Look at you. Great. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having absolutely, me. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us on a Friday. Of course. Well, a COVID Friday, which is like any day now, right? Yeah, and I'm pretty much a whole body recently, so I wasn't doing anything. So. Cool. So, were you always a homebody even before COVID, Alex? Um, no, I wouldn't. I think uh, maybe a little bit. I think I'm turning into one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think COVID for sure pushed me into that direction. But no, I love going out with friends. But I've learned to love being alone. So, yeah. Love it. I love it, Alex. Well, listen, we're super excited to, 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 you know, to have you on the show. You're so, so, so talented. I mean, mesmerizing stuff. You know, House on the Bay, biggest fan, your debut EP, Spoken Word. I mean, I could go on and on, Alex. Just fantastic stuff. Thank you. Well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, definitely your music does not sound like it's made for someone your age. You know, you, yeah, hear, you, you probably hear that every day. I do hear that every day. You hear that every day, right? <laughs> I knew. Yeah. Definitely hear it. it could be worse. Well, it's a good thing. <laughs> Definitely. It's not bad at all. <laughs> uh, that's great, Alex. So are you, are, you in, uh, are you in Austin right now? I know that's where you grew up. Dallas right now. I grew up in Austin. My family moved us to Dallas. That's where I'm from. But gotcha. I lived in New Hampshire for a year, and I'm here. I'm finishing up high school, and then I'm going to leave. <laughs> going to leave, and I've, I don't know where I'm going after this, probably Nashville. But Very yeah. nice. Very nice. Yes. Well, really exciting stuff, Alex. You know, and you mentioned you were a homebody. We've noticed this year you've done quite a, it's been a really productive year for you, right? You've done a lot of painting. I have. I've done a lot of painting. Yeah. You're, re you're really good, too. Is this something that started, like, with quarantine or, like, did you had it before? Um, it's funny. I actually, behind me, I just bought all this stuff for painting behind me. So this is what I'm going to do later. Uh, oh my god you should totally show it off <laughs> my mom's an artist and so i grew up with her painting and all of her artworks around the house and okay i think it's something i always wanted to do but i get frustrated while i'm painting and i'll end up destroying it it's some it's an issue i need to work on it uh but during quarantine i painted a lot and i've gotten back into it and i'm slowly learning not to overpaint and yeah I get frustrated not destroy it well that, that's incredible because you're so good too Thank you're you. so good. It's on your social media. If people want to check it out, it's just out of this world. You. you know, people are making bread. You're making like Picassos, basically. Oh, I wouldn't say that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Alex, um, you know, this year obviously has has been crazy. Uh, it's pretty much over. The year's been. It's pretty much over. Um, how do you think Alex McCarter is gonna describe 2020? Uh, in you know, in, in a few years. Oh interesting uh literally just interesting it was an interesting time i i for sure don't recognize who i was before it i think i lived out on uh my family's farm uh very away i mean everyone was away from everyone and there everyone was very alone and i spent a lot of time out in the country and reflecting and i felt this childhood imagination that I thought I slowly lost growing up the, through my teen years come back to me and I started I don't know just this child I think spending so much time alone by myself in such a beautiful setting and in nature really helped rebirth this imagination this childhood like like not childhood childlike imagination that I once had so I've I'd probably bring that up but I also would say it was a really hard year I lost my uh, my mom's stepdad, which was really hard to COVID, but so our family's healing from that. But everyone, you know, a lot of people lost people. So, yeah, I'm well, sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but but you know the, the flip side, what you said, you know, rediscovering, you know, the uh, imagination, freedom of, of a childhood. That's a beautiful, beautiful statement right there. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it was for sure a journey. It's been weird. It's, I think I'm. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I I. I don't know. I'm like starting. Yeah, I don't know. It was a journey. It was an interesting time. It was interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. But but listen, but like, you know, you're critically acclaimed, you know, your name is buzzing. So artistically, I think it's been a good year for you. Um, yeah, for sure. I think so, too. I'm so thankful for everything. And 
Yeah. I'm excited people are listening to my music. <laughs> well, I mean, what's there not to like? You know, I've already like shared it like the past couple of days on research. You know, we were listening to, you know, Biggest Fan with uh, with my production assistant for like two hours straight the other day. Like there's just great stuff, man. Thank you. That's so sweet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, definitely, Alex. Um, tell us a little bit about growing up. You mentioned your mom was a painter. Yes, she is. She paints. Yeah, she actually hasn't painted. Well, she's supposed to painting in quarantine. She's starting to get back into it. But I grew up with her painting. My dad plays music. I've been pretty. Okay. So I there were arts in your house. Art. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Growing okay. up around the campfire, everyone playing. It's like a Texas thing. I mean, everyone's bringing the guitar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Communally. I love it. Exactly, yeah. That's super. That's super. What are some of the first records that uh that kind of shaped you, Alex? Because oh, yeah. you know, when I hear your music, you know, it's you know, it sounds like Lou Reed, it sounds like you know, Fleetwood Mac, really cool stuff. And so I was just wondering. That's really sweet of you. Um, I think my I grew up, my dad's from Memphis. I grew up on Elvis. Mm. My dad's like a hardcore Elvis fan. His birthday cake was Elvis for his oh, That's great. Like weird. And so I grew up with Elvis and a uh that kind of started it. So I was always thinking it was like really cool when I was young. Cause I was like, I listened to Elvis, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it kind of went into the whole Bob Dylan, like type of deal, which went into Neil Young. And then I found Amazing. Like alternative and really just dove into it. I think it was shaped me. Of course, like, I guess every artist can say Bob Dylan shaped them. <laughs> um, the Velvet Underground. I, I really Epic. like I every artist. I've like, I really appreciate the art even if I don't even if I couldn't listen to it every day if it's if like yeah you got to appreciate the art and I think that's something I'm learning because I'm really putting in my heart into especially recently the things I've been uh writing over quarantine and I'm really appreciating the artist behind the art but John Martin's one that really shaped me yeah that's a, that's one yeah yeah, that's great. That's great, Alex. I, you know, I, and you're such a great songwriter. I, I do want to ask about your songwriting process because, um, I mean, for example, Spoken Word, your debut EP 2019, just an amazing, you know, album that was produced by Aaron Kelly. Um, man, it seems like he was released more than 2019, like in another galaxy, but whatever. Burning Fleeting Love, for example, right? You know, a great songwriting like this. Um, it made me think about your process. Like, where did my love go? So playful as well. Very varied stuff. When you're working, Alex, because people think, people see you and people think a musician is so fun in games, but songwriting is work, as you know this. Um, do you, like, go somewhere and do you tell your mom, tell your manager, listen, I'm going to go work nine to five, write a song, or is it more like when inspiration kind of hits you? Um, I think songwriting... Uh writing comes easily to me uh I, I words spill out of me when I write mostly it's not good stuff so I have to dive in to be like okay this isn't good uh, <laughs> but it's easy for I think for a uh, I talk a lot I don't sound like I talk a lot but I talk a lot and I'm starting uh, but I when I write I write a lot and so a, a song will be five pages and then I nice. have to go back in. But um, writing a song, inspiration will hit. I'll be brokenhearted. Mm. I'll watch a movie. And then I just write it. I think recently, actually, it's funny. I was talking to someone about this earlier. I think I'm going to start having uh, to take periods of time off to write a piece of work that uh, I just need to learn to take out, like, get away from the outside noise again, I think. I'm starting to let outside noises or asking people what they think. And I need to come back to really just being myself. And when I talk about asking people what they think, I'm talking about my friends and stuff like that. And they're really sweet, but I need to come back to my own. And Yeah. 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 I, I mean, yeah. Like, do you ask a lot of people? Do you ask like, or? No, I don't. I have a few buddies that I ask, especially my best friend. <laughs> I'll ask them if it resonates with them uh, from their own perspective, because that's something I'm interested in, because we see everything from our own perspective. And uh, I want to see, uh, it's interesting to see how my friends or someone I love very much uh, relates to something, a total experience that they haven't experienced or experienced in a different way. And so that's something I've always been interested in, how people perceive something. And so that's why I ask people. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Well, it, it makes sense. It makes sense, Alex. I mean, I remember like in, you know, in middle school, we were told to write a poem about something that shaped our life. And, you know, I, I, I said, okay, my broken parenthoods, whatever. And it was, I, I put all this into it and it was like such a piece of shit. I got so like self-conscious about it. No. So, <laughs> does that ever happen to you? Obviously, like, like, are you like, man, is this any good? Like, and that's where your buddies come in? Well, no, I, um, I, th I used to be very, I think I'm a person who's hard on themselves, but when it's, I'm young, I had a, when I was younger, I had a lot of time to create music by myself and, um, actually Aaron Kelly, who produced my, uh, past stuff, he was really amazing in my, uh, the beginning of my artist journey. Cause I would just go in there and I really was just throwing paint at the wall. You know what I mean? Just throwing, yeah, playing just playing it, stuff. Just playing and having fun. And it wasn't so much. It's the first time I, that I wasn't hard on myself uh, on something. And occasionally I'll get hard on myself, but that's not something that I will ask others to make me feel better about. It's just more, listen, like just how did, how does a song make you feel? And if yeah. they, they, it, it makes them feel like this, then I'm like, Oh, great. And if they, yeah so far no one's told me it's actually one time someone told me it's a ton of like shit but it, it really did sound like shit it was awful it was really bad uh, <laughs> and i didn't put it that's out. awesome <laughs> yeah that's great that's great and yeah okay let's talk about biggest fan i mean you've released some really good songs this year but i want to talk to you about biggest fan um you know where did did you have this inspiration like being in the crowd looking at an artist or how was like the creative idea for for the song I was really young when i wrote biggest fan it was probably one of the first it was the first song actually it was the second song i ever shared to others instead of it just being by myself and it, i was like 15 like really young and it was coming from a very naive like little gal at acl and being in this watching a concert and being so in love with the artist. Do you remember or do you want to share who it was or, or no, just what you want to keep it mysterious? Okay, people have asked me that. I don't remember who it was. I just remember writing about it. Um, I really don't know who, I don't remember who it was. But mm -hmm. I this the idea of it though. I was like, wow, to be up on that stage, yeah. look at us, like this, look, look at us watching this person. And then I had this weird, like young little like wise moment where I was like, oh my gosh, like, from far away, I can create them into whatever I want them to be. Yeah. If I actually knew this person, it probably wouldn't be like this. Like, they're just like me. And then I was like, wow. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to write this song about this. And so I guess it was kind of in my younger mind, it was like the dark, the departure of youth and realizing that not everything's romanticized. And so, exactly. yeah. And so recent, uh, recently, uh, I guess last year, I founded the song again. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to re-sing this and I'm just going to release it like an ode to a younger self. <laughs> no, but it resonates. It resonates perfectly, you know? Yeah, I think so. it's, yeah, for sure. It's interesting how, um, usually I don't go back and listen to my songs once I, once I put them out, I'll like move on from it. But with that one, it's interesting because what it meant to me then, it means completely different it's different to me. Uh, it, it means something different to me now with all the, ex with the experiences I've gone through. So yeah. 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 yeah for sure. For sure. I can do that. Yeah. But that yeah. saying never meet your heroes because they, they may disappoint you is like super yeah, true. Definitely. So yeah. So true. <laughs> yeah. If, anyway. Uh, yeah, definitely Alex. You know, I, I have to ask you because you know, you're pretty good at social media, but does it get overwhelming? Like, does that take away from the creativity? Because man, I feel like every day, like they just updated Instagram, TikTok, Reels. There's so many flying hats. Like, yeah. I can't. That's another thing I was talking to someone about. Uh, I don't think us as humans weren't meant to see so many people. You know what I mean? Like, we oh. are not meant to have that much content thrown at us 24 7. No. And I think it's overwhelming for everyone. I think it's the reason for a lot of issues, obviously, in society and our own mental health. And I mean, I think when it's not like social media is not my whole world, I'll post on it, but mm -hmm. it's not something where you're not scrolling all day. And yeah, then, yeah. no, I can't do that. I can't do that for my, like my sanity. I can't do it. It just overwhelms me. And that whole, mm -hmm. this whole perspective deal that I had, it really yeah. 
overwhelms me because I'm wondering like how is this person like they're posting out about wanting this from others and like you know I hope it I don't know honestly I don't think it's going anywhere I wish it was um I'll probably take a break from it soon I really probably will I think it's I don't I don't mind it but I think it's because it's not my whole world but I think it's very easy for someone to make that their whole world but I couldn't agree more I think it takes away um I don't know. I don't know if it takes away from the art for the artist because I think they can express very like from artistically with the way they like put their artwork together and share who they are to people listening and they can connect to them. But I do think it's an issue when it becomes about how many followers you have, yeah. how many likes. And I think that's just unhealthy for Oh God, I think it's just unhealthy for everyone. I think it's one of the yeah, I think it worst be good, yeah. I've opened. And if, if I went back in time, I would have been like, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. You, you're going to regret that. <laughs> it's Alex, weird. Yeah. Alex McCarter, you're so wise. Beyond your you. No, listen, I will say that because trust me, we talk to people here all the time, much older, and they don't have that clarity. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, obviously we don't know what's going to happen next year. Everything is kind of up in the air, but like artistically, can you give us like a little taste of what's coming from Alex McCarter? Are you, do you have an EP coming out, new singles? What's going on? I am very, very excited. So over quarantine, I was writing a bunch and then I wrote with two friends of mine from Nashville and I went up there and I recorded a bunch of things which was interesting it was an interesting time to be recording music during lots but i'm very happy with it i think it's the i'm always like i mean i think you always have to be proud of yourself to a certain extent but then you can't be too proud of yourself because then that just kills the creativity no artist can be too proud of themselves i don't think <laughs> but it's the first time that i'm like you know what like i really think i created a piece of work that i'm i'm proud like i'm proud of it i'm proud of it yeah. i'm okay with it and i think I put a lot of time into it and I think, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. So that should be coming out. That should be coming out. I'm excited. And then, uh, more music will be written and I'm starting to write a bunch. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll write something tonight. <laughs> hopefully I'll write something tonight. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful, yeah. Alex. But listen, before I let you go, you've been so generous with your time. Uh, what's the uh, Christmas uh, or what are the holidays like in the McCarter family household? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, well, my family loves Christmas and we spend it uh, all together. My brother comes home. Actually, my brother's back from college right now. I mean, my younger sister and we spend it as a family. Uh, I guess Thanksgiving's coming up. Usually we spend that with my grandparents, but we're not doing that because of COVID and just safety. Right. Uh, but I love my family. I mean, we're a very close, knit, loving family who loves spending time with each other. And we love holidays. It's like our thing. And so Christmas is good. There's going to be a lot of like singing and stuff around the campfire. It's a thing in my family. It's every night. It literally, it's like a 24 seven party. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> as we get older, I'm like, hopefully this doesn't yeah, turn into too much of a party, but it's great. One day that'll be a special, you know, the Alex McCarter Christmas fireplace special, you know? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Hopefully. That would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure to connect with you. I mean, your music's amazing and all that. And, like, your voice is great, your songwriting. But I have to tell you, Alex, like, it's been an absolute delight just to feel your vibe. <laughs> what a great vibe you have. Uh, it's not... You, I know you have it, so you think that's how the world operates. It's very unique. And, like, that's super cool. That means so much to me. It was so great to meet you, Adam. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we can't wait to see all your future success, Alex. You have, a, you have support in, in South Florida. Thank you so much. Have a great night. <laughs> Bye. Bye.